Major League Rugby might not actually be major as of yet, but it's certainly a rugby league. Two out of three ain't bad. To be fair, it was founded just a few years back, and is slowly gaining ground. To say the stadiums are an eclectic mix is an understatement. Anyway, let's check them out. SeaGeek Stadium is like a lot of the stadiums in this league in that it was built for soccer first and foremost. However, that doesn't really matter at all. A rectangle is a rectangle as the old saying goes. The exterior has some nice hits of brick, stone and even some grass, which I like. As for the interior, well, for the most part it's pretty standard. But there is one feature that's a little odd, and that is at one end where there is a stage for concerts with its own little roof. You probably already noticed that though, because it sticks out like a sore thumb. To be fair, a few other MLS stadiums have the same thing. Choctaw Stadium, Dallas Jackals. It's not just soccer stadiums that these rugby clubs have moved into. This is one of the two stadiums in the league that used to host baseball. In this case, it was the Texas Rangers of Major League Baseball. They moved out of this venue 25 years after it opened. The Jackals, along with some other teams of other sports, have reclaimed the stadium and have even made some adjustments to make it better suited for their respective sports. They weren't so fast on making it look normal. Even back in the day it was a quirky stadium, now even more so. I love that though. Aveva Stadium, Houston Sabercats. This is the only stadium in the league that was actually purpose-built for rugby, specifically the Houston Sabercats. It might seem basic on the surface, but really, it has a bit of everything. The western stand is a covered all-seater, specifically chairback seats in this rather nice yellow, grey and white colour scheme. Over on the eastern side there is some bench seating mixed in. There are some small grass embankments about the place. And to round it out, under the large video board is a bar called the Cat Stand. Snapdragon Stadium, San Diego Legion. This brand new venue was built for the San Diego Aztecs college football team, but I'm sure San Diego Legion don't mind playing second or third fiddle at a great stadium like this. It has nearly every feature you could ask for in a stadium, including chairback seats throughout, a varied and distinctive seating layout, including these secure and piers, which include bars and whatnot. I also much prefer these corner video boards rather than one big rectangular one directly behind the posts, as is usually the case. It just looks better. The main downside here is the lack of shaded seating, but sunshine never killed anyone. Oh wait. Sitting right next to the Green River in Tukwila is Starfire Stadium home of the Seattle Seawolves. I swear every Seattle team name is related to the sea. I know it's a coastal city, but there are plenty of those. Oh, you know what? It's because Seattle has sea in its name, of course. Starfire Stadium is a small yet well-equipped venue, which is part of a greater sports complex. There is just the one stand, but it does have a roof and chairback seats below. It was a nice touch to plant these trees here. Not only do they look good, but behind them are some train tracks. Zion's Bank Stadium, Utah Warriors. It feels like just a couple of years ago that he was the number one draft pick. And already Zion's got himself a bank. Good for him. Once more we have a stadium that is part of a greater sports complex. The property is home to Real Salt Lake's training facilities. And this is their reserve team stadium. This stadium has segregated the bench seating and chairback seating. The west stand has the former, the east stand has the latter. Regardless of which stand you're sitting in, it being Utah, the backdrop ain't half bad. Quite beautiful actually. Veterans Memorial Stadium, New England Free Jacks. We've gone from a former Major League Baseball venue at the start of the video, to a humble high school stadium now. At least it's not one of the many high school stadiums with a running track. They have chosen wisely. The stadium is situated in a tranquil park called Marymount Park, and sits right by a creek. So while it's not quite the Wasatch Mountain range, 
It's a nice setting for a rugby ground regardless. Gold Mine on Airline. Yep, that's a perfectly normal name for a stadium. It does at least make some sense when you consider that the team is called New Orleans Gold, and then makes even more sense when you realise that the stadium is located on Airline Drive. I'd say about a fifth of the stadiums in England are named after which road they're on. Anyway, this place lost its only baseball tenant a few years back, so the Gold have had it to themselves. That doesn't really change the shape of the seating layout though, but it's a start. Segra Field, Old Glory, DC. The stadium might be in the leafy surrounds of Virginia, but it's only about 30 or 4 miles from DC, hence the name. Leesburg is probably slightly lesser known than Washington DC, I think. It wasn't that long ago that the area didn't have any professional sports team. Well, this newly built stadium has brought not one, but two. It is a fairly simple design with an almost temporary look to it, but it certainly does the job. One thing I quite like about it is that the concessions consist of food trucks that park just outside the stadium. Mount Vernon Memorial Stadium, Rugby New York. This historic stadium was up until recently abandoned and in worse shape than uh, the, uh, the DVD rental industry, I don't know. But after a renovation that faced numerous obstacles, including the discovery of toxic soil buried at the site, and an eventual cost of $40 million, the stadium is back better than ever. That's a lot of money for high school football anywhere outside of Texas, so I suppose it's part of the plan to attract some professional teams, and it worked. Silverbacks Park, Rugby ATL. Interestingly, the team that this stadium is named after, Atlanta Silverbacks, doesn't even exist anymore. I can only assume it has something to do with poachers. Hopefully one day we will stop killing gorillas. Having said that, I've yet to try a plant-based gorilla penis soup that tastes anything like the real thing. Anyway, it's another basic stadium akin to Segra Field, with a very pleasant multicolored seating arrangement. And overall it just looks a bit more permanent than Segra Field. Not much else to say. Oh, there's a giant American flag, so that's cool. York Lions Stadium, Toronto Arrows. Of course, there is the obligatory Canadian team. They haven't forgotten about you, Canada. Having opened in 2015 as a multi-purpose stadium with a track built to host an athletics event, it didn't take them too long to realize that running is kind of boring as a spectator sport. I mean, if they were to introduce like a Mario Kart style power-up system, then they'd be onto something. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. Anyway, they not only got rid of the track, but also moved the field closer to the interesting looking main stand. Main stand is the only stand. So those were the Major League Rugby stadiums. My favourite of the lot would have to be, yeah, Snapdragon Stadium for sure. Love that unconventional seating layout. Anyway, if you're new, consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching, have a good one.